Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Digital Artcast. I um, hope everybody is uh, doing well during these uneven times that we are still in uh, and have been for the best part of a year now. Um, I know there's a lot of things going on in the world except COVID um, and uh, whatever it is, I hope that art and other things are keeping you focused at the moment um, and uh, keeping your mind off you know some of the, the 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 worst things that we're having to put up as humans it's uh it's not a great time for anybody but you know hopefully these these uh, these podcasts like i said before are giving you something to listen to and take your mind off it even for a little while um again uh, a little space between the last episode um i don't know if you guys enjoyed the last thing i've done which was like more self-reflective more self uh isolated kind of episode where it was just me talking to myself and the mic um, a couple of people did say they enjoyed that so we could always try and, and get a couple more of those episodes in between the interviews to try and break them up um, let me know in the comments if you guys are digging that um, today we have uh, another great interview um, one that again has been a long time coming and uh, like every or most artists I speak to who are super busy um, trying to nail down a date and a time is always hard um, but this one uh, in particular is great because uh, this artist has a, a, a kind of similar background where, you know, they've, they've strived for something after they've had a kind of small career change and, you know, they've really focused on in one thing and uh, have also been really good at networking and, of course, uh, have have been um, outreached within the community and had their own, you know, channel set up, Discord, all that kind of stuff. So I thought it'd be a good idea to get him on today and talk about uh, not only his journey, his artistic journey, but also the things he's done uh, more recently with uh, his own brand and, and, and helping people find their own path. Uh, so please welcome me uh, uh, and bring along our next guest for today. And that is uh, Antonio Stappart. Hey, I got it right. Hey, <laughs> hey, Gordon, you got it right. Yeah, yeah I wasn't far off. One was, of the first. Oh, I'm always nervous that when I say these different names, it's always difficult because yeah, uh, I get that English English speaking people are, are sometimes not the greatest with uh, <laughs> my names in general. Like it's just we're just so dumb, right? We can only speak one language half the time. People in Scotland and the UK, it's like I always revel when I meet people at events and they can speak about five languages. So it's uh, yeah, it's a certain. Yeah. But I I have a very very particular name. I uh, it's yeah, always been I mean, hard like, to pronounce. Yeah. Antonio, I think, is is mostly yeah. common uh, in in that sense that you could you could pronounce that. Yeah, but Stapartz is uh, it's funny as well because yeah, it's always like the half the second half is arts, so it's like <laughs> I know, I know, I know. You're destined to be an artist. There was no other <laughs> choice. Yeah. Um. So yeah, thanks for for coming on and thanks and for having this. me. Yeah, of course, man. Uh, we've tried to have this for a, a while now. Um, but of course, you've been super busy with art wads and and your teaching and YouTube and um. Yeah, just in general, just I think you've been non-stop since you launched the website, yeah, right? It's just yeah. been full throttle. Um, but of course, you know, now you're doing this, but then when I, well, maybe not even know when I first met you, but when I met you a couple of years ago, you were still quite heavy um, doing freelance and working in art uh, as a concept artist and, and visual development artist. Yeah. Um, I mean, you're still doing that. That's still a, a part of your life, but... It's still the course, biggest have... part, actually. Um... Yeah, like the, the teaching thing isn't really, it's not at the moment anyway it isn't all encumbrance and it's not you know the whole the whole part of you yeah. you definitely still but are it working definitely concept will artists. Be at some point yeah i think that's probably the case for a lot of artists right because yeah. you always want to be financially independent and i think especially the higher you climb the ladder the more you want to send the elevator back down right you want to help other people find their path and um i mean i definitely know the five years now i've had this podcast like the emails I get every now and again where people are like, oh, I'm like quitting my job because of you and going to college. I'm like, okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, like it's it heavy. always like floors you. Yeah. So, but then you're actually getting people into work. You're like getting like people into jobs, which is, I think, even a step beyond because then, you know, you're launching somebody's career. It's like, that's very rewarding. A, yeah, of course. So take us back because I think your story begins, if I'm right. 2014 2015 that 2015, was kind of when you yeah. were like starting to like take it seriously and you know really really practice and yeah draw, draw every day and and uh and you had also like a really super uh unique sense so so what to do first is uh if you want to just for the people who don't know you if you want to introduce yourself quickly and just talk about uh what you do and who you are yeah, yeah sure um so basically when I was very little, I was always kind of this doodling kid. Um, 
but like nothing serious never never did any art or something and when you imagine doodling it's like like doodling today like literally just at the end of your pages in school just some scribbles just some i don't know uh, smiley faces whatever uh but i did like to do that um and then that sort of got away from me um and then i became you know a young adult not really knowing what to do I did manage to get a, a good job at a major corporation at Apple uh, as a as a retail uh, sort of managing position, uh, mm-hmm. which was definitely a very good job. Um, yeah, but even always, at retail level, because because uh, Apple are, are quite synonymous for them. Yeah, companies, so yeah, 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 absolutely. They're mm-hmm. very very open to it, and I've learned. Mm-hmm. I think I wouldn't change it now. Like I wouldn't go back and and start art earlier because i've learned so much of the business side of things from apple um but i think yeah like 24 2014 i knew something was missing um and i wanted to do something that was a little bit more creative um and ironically enough i wanted to get a tattoo at the time um and i looked up you know i wanted to have my own say on how to you know when someone's going to put something on my body, I want to have some sort of say in it. Uh, right. So I wanted to make my own design for it a little bit. So I, I searched the internet and my wife can confirm this. Once I get my you know, mind onto something, I'm like OCD. It's like 100%. <laughs> uh, and so I start learning these things. I uh, started browsing Reddit first and then you came to the, you know, the normal things, the, like the drawing on the right hand side of the brain, stuff like that. And, and, um, yeah, or yeah. the left hand side, I don't know. I remember. Um, and then Reddit browsing, Reddit getting to conceptart.org. And then really at conceptart.org, I realized that there are actual people doing concept art professionally. Like they're making stuff up for a living. And at, up until then I was very ignorant. I didn't know that existed. Um, and I think that was one of my, eureka moments in my life i guess uh whereas like damn this is what i need to do like this is i'm meant to do this I, i've always loved drawing creating um and so that's just i gave it a hundred percent um i was still working at apple i was st- but every lunch break i was drawing for an hour when i got home i was dra- drawing for another two to three hours um i did that consistently throughout i followed all of the you know, guidelines that the big names were already saying back then, you know, like Anthony Jones or, you know, guys like uh, Carl Kapinski or uh, mm. Craig Mullins, the guys that I could just find online, uh, just what they said, you know, rep- rep- repetition, repetition, consistency, do it every day uh, and do the fundamentals. Yeah. That's the most yeah. important thing. And I think I, I, you know, clang onto that or clung onto that really religiously. And so, um, I, I, you know, I, I boosted my skills quite, quite fast, uh, in a couple mm-hmm. of years, I could, uh, I, I made the jump to a professional career career and never looked back since. Yeah. And I think it's interesting as well, because, you know, you were talking about, you know, like the, the time you took it seriously, but then there was a, uh, an ideology, a, a method behind how you were, uh, learning things or, yeah. or at least st- structuring them, which was unique. Right. That's true. Yeah. And I think that a major part of that a major contributing factor and the reason why I created Artwatt is um, when I decided to to, you know, to pursue this dream and try to make mm-hmm. it something professional. Uh, mm-hmm. I knew that I had to have some sort of template that I knew was effective in learning new skills. Um, and at the time I was doing competitive CrossFit say you know at a pretty low level not not anything uh particular but i knew that right. from crossfit you had to tackle your weaknesses and and you know um do it consistently train all the fundamentals of fitness um mm-hmm. so it was actually the like the similarities with art were very much apparent for me uh, and i saw mm-hmm. i applied a sort of similar structure in my artistic training as i did with competitive crossfit and that turned to you know, that turned out to pay off quite well. Uh, yeah. And that's one of the main reasons that I'm applying that in my art walk program as well. 
Yeah, because it's a uh, it's a weird thing where you, you know weird thing, but um, uh, a unique thing where you're calling the people in your your discords uh, art art fleets. Yeah, like art that, fleets. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like you know you're you're taking that uh, rudimentary fundamental training m- mentality that comes with fitness and working out and right. applying that to art, which is, I think. Well, I mean, I don't. I mean, I, I don't know because maybe somebody has at one point, but I, I definitely feel like it is. Like you're maybe one of the first to do it like that. I mean, I could be wrong, but like I know even looking back, like you said, with Scott Robertson and Carl and yeah, Craig and all the people that came before it, I've never really heard people doing things like that. Yeah, specifically like you have done them. So I'm, is that I'm, being your finding as well, or I think well, definitely the 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 online platform that I created is very unique. Um, not only right. in the way that it's structured consistently mm-hmm. and and people can. Actually, it's not something that has an end date, right? And mm. because learning fundamentals doesn't have an end date, and that's the mindset right. that I took from it. Um, yeah. But of course, in the past, art has been compared to physical training a lot of the times. Uh, guys like right. Jeff Watts, Jeffrey Watts, do it mm-hmm. all the time. Other artists mm-hmm. that I know did it before me, probably. Um, right, right. It's just that that you know that philosophy. Uh, mm-hmm. does ring true for for a lot of people. But I think that I was the first one to really solidify it in some sort of online learning platform uh, where people right. could have consistent engagement for an infinite amount of time. Uh, and that was very important to me because I knew from, I took my, my fair share of, well, not my fair share. I took a couple of mentorships, like two or three. Um, mm-hmm. And they have been of, you know, invaluable contribution to my art but they right. they're not what made me the artist i am today it's my consistency in learning and applying mm. and tackling weaknesses that made me the professional artist that i am today um yeah so that's kind of the mindset that that i want to share with students and just people mm-hmm. around the world that art what is, yeah. is art what is built for a niche audience it's built for people that actually want to become professionals um, right, because when you want to be, and that's why I don't sugarcoat it, and that's why I call my students art leads, is because when you're an art lead, you know there are dates that are gonna suck, and they're gonna suck badly, right? It's right. not always sunshine and rainbows. Uh, being an artist, <laughs> it definitely it's never sucks. sunshine and rainbows. You're lying, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I know. Exactly, exactly. You know this better yeah. than anyone. Yeah, right? I know, I know. Uh, yeah, Jesus so, Christ, man. Yeah, the sunshine never comes, but yeah, <laughs> it seems so, right? But then you have yeah. these days of pure pure delight that make it all yeah. well um yeah but yeah so that's kind of the philosophy that i had with uh, with the training program yeah i think it's it's definitely one of the few things i've seen where especially with what you're doing i think where it's unique also is that if somebody sets up a, a program and i'm not saying this like in a bad way that this is just a reality of life People who are like at the tippity top, like, you know, like Ryan Lang and a lot of these guys who are, you know, if they ever done like a, a, a session or a, a set of tutorials, it's usually pre-recorded, it's done a month in advance, it's put up once, you know, obviously, of course, they'll occasionally get feedback or they'll say like, oh, email me if you have any problems, blah, 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 which is great. But you are physically sitting in a Discord, like, you know, every yeah. other day you're talking to people, you're checking in on them, you're doing now the classroom sessions, which is like a thing where you do it like it's every Wednesday and... You talk to people and you do like a specific demo of one yeah. particular like technique. Um, you give people feedback. You now have these in-depth mentorships so people can pay to have like the kind of one-on-one session where you can like really dive in and like if they're really looking for a job, like really push their portfolio and make sure yeah. that they're like, you know, they're the best. So in that essence, I think like, and then obviously you're saying like you're still working as a concept artist. So like to me, that's crazy, right? That's like, a, that's the holy grail of like, people who come out of schools or programs or things in the world and they want to become a, a visual development artist or concept artist and they don't know where to start, who to talk to, what online course or gum road to buy. Yeah. And then even then, like, I, I mean, it was def- the same for me where if I'd done an online course or a, a tutorial, I would watch it, but then like I would have a million questions afterwards and be like, well, what the fuck? I don't know what to do. Now. So like, yeah, like I think that's what, where your thing stands uniquely above everybody else's is that you really put time into that program and you know you really hone and care about your students yeah yeah and yeah that's that's really true and i've never expected this of myself because um like to my own detriment uh 
mm-hmm. a couple of years ago even i was the guy that was thinking like if you can't do it you teach right um right. very badly so because yeah our teachers like especially the professional ones like the guys i hugely admire like jeffrey watson and, and um uh, even guys like proco you know that really know how to articulate fundamental skills it takes it requires a an insane amount of knowledge to do that yeah um and i've realized that now and i realize that i don't have that knowledge right so uh, that's the the imposter syndrome that sometimes kicks in um Mm -hmm. but i have sort of the naive confidence let's say uh, Mm -hmm. that i have worked for a lot of big companies a lot faster than i anticipated in my early career um and i think it was even from Jeffrey Watts that I heard this, but he said, like, once you make it as a professional, it's time for you to give back to the community, right? So kind of the hero's journey and, you know, uh, share with with the others what you've learned. Uh, And so I wanted to do that, but I wanted to do that in a a more engaging way uh, and not like you said, in a tutorial setting uh, where it does sometimes feel pretty disconnected. Uh, mm-hmm. And you indeed end up with a lot of questions afterwards. It's sort of this principle like in a tutorial, and I'm not speaking for all tutorials because there are beautiful tutorials. And I have, I probably have the entire Gumlo library <laughs> myself, <laughs> but um, yeah. a lot of the tutorials are this like give a man a fish mentality where you learn to draw or paint one specific thing and they're not teaching right. you how to fish, right? Uh, and that's what I'm trying yeah. to do with Artwatch. Yeah, I definitely feel like it's one of these things where you'll dive into something and like you said afterwards, you're kind of like, well, that was cool. What do I do now? Like, you know, I've done the thing. How do I do the next thing? And I think even that's been something I've struggled with, even with some 3D stuff I've been doing where, you know, you'll watch a tutorial and then you'll be like, cool, I want to make something of my own now. How do I apply that to what I've just learned? And that's the hardest part. Because remember somebody telling me that, you know, I was doing I was doing somebody's tutorial. I can't remember who specifically, but I was talking to them afterwards and saying, oh, it was a really good tutorial. I loved it. Uh, I can't wait to use these techniques. And then he was saying, well, it takes, you know, the whole course takes 10 hours, but then it takes like another 200 hours to apply everything that I've taught you. Right. I mean, so it, you can watch a tutorial. I mean, anybody can really go through a tutorial in essence, but then it's taking that stuff and then applying it to what yeah. you want to do next. Yeah. And I think also with tutorial, and that's sort of the idea that I to some degree stole from physical training principles um, is that the thing with physical training is you never do, or usually uh, if you're doing it well, you're never doing the same cycle of exercises exactly the same because your body will get used to it and you will stagnate, right? So you need to keep it fresh and engaging while still tackling all those fundamental principles. And that's the exact same thing that I do with Artwatt so that there are always new assignment cycles and they're always unique, but they are always, you know, um, practicing the same fundamental core principles like perspective, anatomy, design, color, shading, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Or the, the, the ticking all the boxes with everything you teach them, you want to make sure that you're, you're, uh, I'm trying to think out, but yeah, like when you when you train specifically in areas, you're making sure that you're working out the maximum amount of muscle groups at the same time, basically. And it's the same thing with training with you're doing your 2D stuff is that you want to make sure like it's got a bit of color, it's got a bit of composition, a bit of perspective, you know, and like you're not really just focused. I mean, you can't focus on one thing, but the best training, like you said, and something like CrossFit especially is is uh, is the overall body training. It's usually what you're you're trying yeah. to aim for most yeah, of the time. Yeah, and there definitely goal. there definitely is a focus on one particular area at some points, but it's just yeah. that if we re um, if we redo the same focus area, let's say, mm-hmm. it's not yeah. with the exact same exercises. Yeah, 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 it's something that will be like slightly different or like exactly. a twist on exactly you know, something you were doing earlier. Exactly, yeah, 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 it makes sense. So, um, for instance, I mean, now that you're doing these sessions, of course, you've got the, again, something that is unique, I think, as well, is the fact that, you know, if you sign up for your, for your, uh, so you do it exclusively through Gunmode, right? Or is it Patreon still, or? Uh, no, I do it just uh, oh, of through course, the, website. On the website. Yeah, yeah, only right, through okay, so you have a, yeah. Right, yeah. So um, I know. Been, I think it was that long ago I signed up. It was the last time I remember actually doing it. it was maybe on Patreon, but uh, but yeah. So the unique thing also as well is that as, as every week you change specifically like what the subject matter is because yeah. like every week it's every like, other week. So every, it's a biweekly every, uh, cycle. 
Right, so yeah, it's like, you know, one week it was like, you know, birds, yeah. two weeks later it was Vikings, yeah. the, two weeks after that it was mechs, you know, and that as well I think is is great. I mean, like, there's just so many things I think you do well, um, and I think it's 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 hard because not every, te- not every teacher, not every artist in my mind can be a good teacher. Like, there's some people who will try and turn their hand to it, but they just can't find those fundamental skills to explain things well. Yeah. But I think the way you break down information, um, there's only so many people I think stand above where you are just now, like teaching wise. Um, you know, you can say what, what you want maybe about your art skills, you know, professionally and whatever else. But I think with teaching, you're definitely, you know, um, like, you know, like Adam, you know, Adam Duff, who is, of course, a great teacher. We yeah, know him yeah, very yeah. well. He's, he's an amazing guy. Uh, but also guys like James Murphy, Modern Day James, I think also have a really good spin on how they teach things and how they approach subject matter. So <clears throat> there's only, I think, a select few people who are really doing it well, as opposed to, like, you know, the hundreds and hundreds of stuff or, or, or you know, like you say, tutorials that are online that are just... Uh, no, in essence, thrown up and left. But you know, like they, they're done, and then you know they have a busy enough life that they can't really spend any more time on top of that. So, yeah, it's yeah. exactly that. And I think um, I, I, I uh, talked about this with Tyler Edling as well, uh, another great example right. of good teachers. He said as well yeah. that there are very few platforms that do it consistently, um, and I think mm-hmm. a particular reason for that is because it's so time consuming. So what a lot of my students probably don't see is that still, well, I'd say, sixty-five to seventy percent of my time is spent on freelance work. Um, right just because I ha- still have these clients and I still need to do the work. Um, yeah. So in the other 30%, I do everything else for Artwatch. And it's with a lot of love and, and uh, you know, it's a, it's a passion project. Um, hmm. But I think it just, it just it requires so much of you that I can definitely see why other people artists choose not to do it. It's not that they wouldn't be able to. It's just that it's, mm-hmm. it's super time consuming. Um, and I think I also could have gone the exclusive client route where I only do freelance work. Uh, but I right. think for me, it was it just wasn't as satisfying or fulfilling. Um, you know, just like you you probably saw my 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 talk with uh, Ahmed Aldori. Um, I'm very much getting into you know psychology and and you know how to find fulfillment and stuff like that. And I think being in service of other people gives you a lot more of a rewarding feeling than uh just doing it all for yourself yeah i mean but that's like i mean i don't know how deep you want to go down the rabbit hole here but like that's that's basically the human condition right is that we all know that anything that is done selfishly benefits you you know will only have such a lasting effect but then if you give back so other people benefit from that also then you know that lasts forever that feeling where you know and that's that's more it fills you more than the thing that was only temporary that only lasted a couple of seconds. Cause you know, Oh, you got a job offer or oh, you finished yeah. this client. The, then like, Oh, I just, I just managed to change somebody's entire life. And now they're working in a job because of me, like that'll never go away. That will always be something in the back of your mind. And I think that definitely is more powerful. Um, and like I said, it's, that's not just an art thing. That's, that's just a human nature thing, right? Like the, the more or so the less selfish we could be, in our lives in general um i mean like even uh, this is this is again going into, uh, but i think it's great to talk about so we can dive into it but like you know i remember years ago because again i'm a star wars not like i think most people are and lucas was talking about when he developed uh the jedis and the siths right he basically broke it down into two classes of people so the jedi were selfless people and the sith were selfish yeah and then that was a good way to actually break down their character arcs where like, you know, a lot of the Sith like wanted power just for themselves. You know, they didn't want to help other people. They just wanted to be powerful. They just wanted all. They wanted the Senate. They wanted all the money, the power. So that's the selfish people, right? Who eventually, well, initially, sorry, will maybe get power and, and, you know, snatch that away. But in the long run, we'll lose it because it's never a fulfilling thing. And they're always wanting more and more. It's, I mean, it's the old acronym as well that whether people would put money and power want, they want more money and yeah. power. Um, with the Jedi or selfless, you know, like the old marshals of the old West where, you know, they went out and they protected people and they helped planets align and solve conflicts and, and always taught 
all specially taught to other people, passed down, had Padawans, continued the flow, meditated, were still, didn't really have much, didn't take on wives or any yeah. responsibilities. Their service was to the order. So I think, in essence, we are like Jedis, basically. <laughs> well, that's that's something that I just wanted to correct for a second, because I'm not trying to preach here that I'm a Jedi or a saint. No, because no, no. Yeah, at all yeah, times, yeah. I'm still doing this for... Yeah, you know, well, no, not not everything, but I'm doing it for monetary yeah. gain, of course, because I need to survive. Yeah. And Belgium is one of the most expensive countries to be self-employed. Um, yeah. So that's why I'm still doing a shit ton. Can I swear here? Oh, fuck oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, that's why I'm still doing a shit ton of freelance work. Um, it's yeah, it's yeah. the main reason. So we're definitely, you know, we all want to have our, you know, um, or financial independence and stuff like that. But it's more rewarding doing it through a platform like the one that I'm doing. Um, and just also for your artistic learning, because the guys that you mentioned, um, like Adam or um, James Murphy in particular, um, his growth has been exponential as well because of that. He he dove into the, like the, the teaching uh methodology or philosophy from the get-go right even when he was still starting out he was already teaching very articulately and so he got a grasp on fundamentals very quickly which made him a, a really good artist um yeah. you know exponentially I faster mean, than a lot of people yeah i was going to say when i first started talking to james years back just before i interviewed him like he was telling me the main reason he done that was because he learned from a lot of masters early on for people to brainstorm as well is that the most way or the quickest way to solidify something in your memory is to teach it to somebody else. Yeah. So he would learn a technique from Scott Robertson's book or Proco or whatever, and then he would jump straight on YouTube and be like, cool, here's what I learned and here's how you break it, here's how I broke it down, here's how you would break it down. So like that in essence was almost like no by accident, but like, you know, because he was doing these things just to help him or to reinforce stuff that he was learning, it then of course also helped other people. So then he was like, oh, well, this is good because now I want to help other people and, you know, this will be a good thing because I can teach and this will also help me for certain aspects and then that just snowballed and, of course, look at him now. You know, he's he's doing phenomenal. Exactly. But yeah, like it, it, it really is interesting in the fact that, you know, <sighs> teaching is one of these things that you don't always want to maybe turn to because it seems like a lot of effort, but I think it always pays off in dividends that, you know, you're going to get not only great students out of it, but also a way to sustain yourself as an artist independently and financially. And, you know, I think it also gets you that uh, recognition really quickly as well. Like people, if you're teaching stuff online at a really high level, the community quickly turns on to that because of course also there will be professionals also who want to learn from you, right? Not just students. There'll also be people who are looking at that thinking, oh, that's really interesting how he does that. Maybe I should learn that as well. So yeah, yeah, like there definitely is a whole cycle once you start getting into that world and tyler said it himself like you know even tyler still works for himself and you know so does ahmed so does james but you know like they have this whole other structure where they have an online presence and could yeah. probably easily live off that as well as being a professional artist so um i think even james you know way back when i talked to him about a couple of months ago he was talking about you know he's doing storyboards now in animation and he was saying you know i would say to james like oh, what's your end goal like do you want to get any a job do you want to be you know, do you want to work in a studio, blah, blah, blah. And he was like, no, really, man, I just, I want to make my own stuff. I want to be my own boss. I want, I want to make my own worlds, my own IPs. And I was like, sacrilege. Like, you can't do that. You have to work for somebody. <laughs> but then, yeah, like there's so much financial freedom because of the internet, like you can have a career where you just do your own thing, right? Of course, especially now. I mean, I, I started freelancing directly in a in a country like Belgium where there's almost no gaming studio, right? There's one now right. that's pretty big, Larian Studios. But other than that, there was almost no, there's almost no studio. And I, I managed just fine. So, um, yeah. yeah, it's definitely... Larian are the guys who do Baldur's Gate, right? Yeah. Yes, cool. Yeah. Yes. Very, very impressed with your stuff. Yeah. Very awesome, impressed. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I got to play Baldur's Gate. Uh, I was on Google Stadia, funnily enough, actually, and um, and yeah, it was like it was. Oh my god, like the the visuals. Wow. So uh, yeah, so yeah. But then shout, yeah, like shout it, out it, to uh, Kun van Mirlo. You should get him on the podcast. A great art director. Oh, probably, man. Yeah, you can yeah, hook yeah. me up. I'm also oh, I'll hook you up. But you yeah. know, yeah, yeah. The 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 Larian guys. Like I was, I was, I didn't actually expect it to be of that caliber because it was. I thought at the time it was a, a smaller studio, but like I learned as I dive deeper into that rabbit hole that the guys have got like quite the team behind them. So, and, uh, 
Yeah, yeah. I've uh, I've been playing Baldur's Gate very happily. It's 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 a it's a well executed game. Yeah, very, very well done. So, um, but yeah, so I mean, like we we're saying, you know, to live online now is like you know one thing that is almost out of necessity because, like you said, in Belgium there isn't a lot around you, right? I mean, yeah. apart from if you want to maybe you know journey into the Netherlands or France or one of the neighboring places, but uh, but yeah, like if you're if you're wanting to be in Belgium, then it's it's difficult because then. Well, I think that's the case for anybody, right? If you want to stay where you've you've lived, then it will be hard because obviously a lot of studios are scattered across yep. the earth. So, yep. yeah, yeah. I think is that something you made? Yeah. Oh no, you go. No, I think to a certain degree also that sometimes it's sometimes it feels like a paradox with students where they feel like it's impossible to get a job, but the job that they want to get is at you know AAA studios. So that feels like a like like a super large gap, right? Be, but whereas when I first started, I was drawing for anyone that was willing to pay me, man. Uh, yeah. I didn't care as long as I was drawing, right? And that just yeah. gets your foot in the door, and then you slowly build that up. It's actually exactly the same as you know um, building up your your fundamental skills. Is you build you have to build up your network, you have to build up your professional portfolio for that matter, um, and so not expecting to learn you know be a student and then instantly be like a triple a junior artist because that to me are like unreal expectations and i think when you mm-hmm. when you jump into like the freelance world you can really have an opportunity to work for a lot more smaller companies or indie companies but really get your professional portfolio going yeah i think it's interesting as well where there's almost an expectation that like your first step will be working for a massive company yeah. but then like you said that's that's a very rare instance like it's almost the exception not the rule where you know if you're like if you're like you you know or james or, or ahmed or you know tyler sure like that might be the fun. i mean like even tyler like you know i was just on his his, his show i think the, the time of recording he was telling me my, my him and mine my episode that i've done with tyler will be going live tomorrow and okay. we t- broke down some of my 3d projects but when i interviewed him a couple of weeks back um, we were talking about like when he had his first job and he was almost the complete opposite of maybe what he is now, but he was like, yeah, when I had my first job, I was just kind of coasting by and wasn't really focusing on improving my skills and worked for this really small company. And But then like you see his client list now, you know, yeah. like it is obviously impressive, but yeah, I think it's it's the thing that I hated when I first came in the industry because I left my job at 28. So by the time I got out of uni at like 32, I was like, great. I'm going to fire into Rockstar Games or like yeah, yeah. Axis full time or whatever. And and I mean, funnily enough, there was one person from my, my class actually went to Axis straight after university, but he was a crazy wizard with 3D. But um, but yeah, like it's a very rare case. Uh, I mean, like even we were talking about that the other day where uh, I forget the artist's surname, but her first name is Jasmine, but she's a, a 3D artist. She does really stylized 3D environments. Um, you pro- you've probably seen the stuff on our on an A level and probably, stuff, but yeah. you know, She's still in university, like you know, and I think she's been featured on A level about five times. So it's like, you know, that's not everybody. That's like the very, very rare instance exactly. of people who, yeah, are, yeah, yeah. And it's not, yeah. it's not like, and that's not to take away from their insane skills, but because they, of not. they yeah. do have insane skills. Those exceptions, yeah. like you talk about, but it's also mm-hmm. just the right style or the right projects that they're doing at the right time, right? Yes, that gets them yes. highlighted. Um, so yeah. it's it's basically like winning the lottery. It's it's an amazing yeah. thing to go through, but it's not the standard for everyone. And I think when you when you want to work in those bigger studios, because that's definitely a good goal to have. You know, it's a, it's a yeah, prestige yeah. thing. Um, it's just that those studios would often want to see you, you know, have completed prior work, and if you can show passion for indie projects that you did or just small time, small time gigs, as long as they can see some body of work that you've really put your heart and soul into, they'll be much more inclined to hire you faster than when you just come out of school fresh, not really knowing how the industry works. Yeah. I mean, like it was funny enough. I was, I was having this conversation when I interviewed Alex Beddows and Alex was talking about when he's looked at a lot of people coming into the industry the people he's seen who have struggled or not got in as quick have been people who have came from university or schools yeah um the the people he's seen that's excel in the industry are people like yourself who are self-taught and driven have a goal in mind you know want to do their own thing don't want to particularly you know go with the flow and and do what everybody else is doing so 
I mean, the more I've went into this industry and, and experienced it, the more I've actually seen that as quite a valid point. I think it is. A lot of people I know who have went to universities, you know, speaking to friends and friends upon friends, my partner's friends, like the guys who went and done courses in game design or, or any course really, like if they haven't really focused or, or shown a lot of passion when they came in the, out of university and haven't got a job straight away, they end up working in a supermarket or right. some other job, some admin job or something. So it's it's. I think it's very common to both balance your expectations for what you're going to have when you leave and also measure them to make sure that you're not overreaching yourself and causing yourself to be like you know super depressed because if you're like you're like oh i've been drawn for a year and i'm not working at fucking blizzard what am i doing wrong you know i mean like that you know people there's some people i know who have just got a job at blizzard this year but they've been a games artist for like 15 years yeah there you go so yeah it's it's a very common tale i think people need to really and I had to learn the hard way because I wanted to be like coming out of my job, you know, coming to university in my thirties and be like, cool, I'm going to have a game shop now. But then the last year has been like indie project here, freelance gig here, working for somebody in somewhere else. So like, yeah, it's a very, it's and a it's very that, rough. It, and- it's that yeah. persistent passion that you're showing through even in yeah. the worst times of your life, maybe, right? Um, yeah, yeah, you yeah. still have that lingering passion to do these things to, to pursue this career and that's going to always show through um when you go to jobs or when you go to new clients or when studios see yeah. your body of work um yeah. so that's the most important thing and i also think a lot of students have already heard of the like the big three things that you need to be right you need to be good at what you do you need to be fast or efficient and you, you need mm-hmm. to be great to work with but i think they yeah. often miss have a misconception about what it means to be great to work with they often think mm. that that only means like you're you're the cool guy at the office you get a you know you you get along with everyone and sure mm. that's a part of it but that's really not the gist of it because as a freelance artist you know you're not really that sociable with your clients but you still need to be great to work with and that means mm. usually is that you get all of your deadlines on time and you you know, commit to all the promises that you make. And that's a very hard thing to do as a freelancer. Um, But that's one of my like staple marks for my company, Cutting Sketch Design, is I have Mm -hmm. never, ever, ever, ever missed a deadline. Like never. Right. And that's something that just, that, that echoes throughout the industry because some of the clients that have contacted me, you know, studios like Falta or Ubisoft or whatever, Mm -hmm. They have contacted me because they have been referred by or I have been referred by other art directors, right? Uh, It's not Mm. that I've contacted them directly. And I'm probably, and this is just uh, a guess on my end, but they're not, Mm. the art directors that refer me, they're not like, hey, this is the greatest artist you've ever seen, right? That's right. They probably refer me like, hey, you want to get shit done on time? Call this guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, I mean, I think that definitely is... A thing that I learned again later on, and uh, I mean, I say this is funny to always give myself charge for like, oh, I didn't know this, you know, at the start. And I mean, like, I've only been, <laughs> I've only really been in the industry for like four years. Right. So I mean, like, in the grand scheme of things, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is what I mean. Like, people are like, oh, I should have known this and I should have known that. But like, I remember uh, uh, Alex Heath doing a stream, and he was talking about this thing that a lot of students don't really realize is that uh, not only do you need to do a job um on time and, and bring it in within deadline or whatever else but really focusing on on, a, on the task and doing it to the absolute best of your ability like right. you know even if it's for like a shit client or whatever or you're not getting paid what you should be getting paid you know if you're taking on work making sure that you hand something back that you're like i'm proud to have my name on this like this is something i worked really hard on and i feel like i push myself and i think it looks better because of that and then you can walk away happy for that because I definitely know when I first done a couple of jobs, even after I left university, you know, I'll, you know, I'll be honest. I was like, you know, oh, you know, that's good enough. That'll do, you know, like, oh, it's, it looks okay. Good enough to push back it. And I mean, like, obviously I think a lot of times I've not had a lot of complaints. So people probably were happy with what I've done, but like, you know, that mentality can eventually get you in trouble where like, you know, if you're pushing out stuff that is like, oh, that, that's good enough. That'll do that eventually will come back to haunt you because, you know, you're not wanting things in the future to be attached to your name and, and you look at them and think, oh God, what was I thinking? Yeah, yeah. I really, true. I should have spent the extra couple of hours finishing that off or... Yeah, so... But then that's something you'll probably understand yourself, right? Yeah, yeah. That's... Yeah. That's something that... 
that, but that just comes with passion, right? It's usually that right, that, yeah. that initial or that internal drive that you have to not, mm -hmm. you know, all the prestige aside, the monetary gain, whatever. Um, mm -hmm. It's just that you want to create. You want to put yourself out there. You want to create the best version of yourself in every art piece that you do. Um, right. And that just continues throughout your professional career. But if you lack that passion, that drive, it's very hard to... Uh, to you know, art artificially create that it's uh, it's almost impossible, yeah. and that's why you're probably like you said, a lot of students struggle in these these big companies is because they might have the talent, but they sometimes lack the the true inherent passion to go, you know, to go the extra mile when times are yeah. th uh, tough. Yeah, and I think that's that passion is definitely the the thing that separates you from like you know, getting a call back from that company to like, you know, Blizzard's art director reaching it to you because the stuff was so good. Like it was recommended all over the place and he got a, an email for somebody that was, you know, like it's, it's, it's the passion is definitely a thing that will sell you to other companies. Yeah. It will definitely be the thing that people look at your work and like, Jesus, look how good that is. And then it comes out and your name's attached and people are like, oh, that's amazing. And then they want to contact you. But then if like you put something out like, like you know, mediocre and then it gets attached and then the credit's rolling, you're like, ah, well, it was okay. Uh, whatever. You know, they're not going to be buzzing up the phone lines try to get you yeah. on the next project because you know it's not something that blew them away as opposed to like you know like you always see that thing in art station where you look at one piece and you're like jesus christ like how did they like yeah. how how did they you know it's like uh every time tb Choi puts a drawn like yeah <laughs> you're, you're like what is what is going on there like the, there's some kind of robotic chip or an arm or like some but yeah it's like uh it's like uh, Kim Jong Ji as well, like he's the same, right? He just, yeah, yeah, yeah. The guy has like polyps on his fingers because he draws so much. Yeah. Like he just never puts a pencil in. And uh, I remember uh, Proko was actually um, interviewing him recently, and uh, for for Lightbox, and uh, he was talking about like he just got diagnosed with diabetes, and that's why he's starting to slow down and stuff now. And I was like, oh my god! But like it's a uh, it's a weird thing where like you know you see these guys who you just think you know, how are the human, how can they exist on the, you know, you know, basically we're the same type of person, we're the same mammal, but like, he seems to have this brain that allows him to draw and these crazy dimensions and perspectives yeah. and like, how does, he, how does he work it out? So it's, I think there's, there's almost a thing where people now want to kind of almost tear down those people because, you know, they don't want to imagine them as some like ungodly, unachievable goal. Yeah. But then again, that's talking about the people who are the exception, know the rule, right? Yeah, very much so. But they're, they're, they're just as human as you and me, but they have that extra motivation and passion that keeps them going. And that's almost in every community, whether that's art or sports or anything else. It's there's mm. always a couple, a handful of people that stand yeah. above the, everyone else, right? And it's usually because of they they want to put in the extra work and they do it with love and passion, where others yeah. might give up. And don't get me wrong, they might train or, or you know work super mm -hmm. hard but then there mm -hmm. are just other people that are even more crazy and just go the extra mile um yeah but oftentimes that comes with a great sacrifice as well right i mean that's uh yeah that's just life yeah it's difficult because i know that's definitely one thing that has crossed my mind a couple of times you know especially because i'm a wee bit older than other people in the industry and you know people of my age in the industry have already had like the 10 years working in games or you know doing things in a studio for a long time and they have this whole legacy behind them and you know all these merits and, and they've worked with all these caveats and it's it's difficult now because i'm trying to get in on the ground floor and right. that doing that in your 30s because i'm 35 now so you know doing that in my age is like it's harder because i'm already thinking about stuff like kids and a family or, or at least settling down in some respect and it's it's one of these things where you always worry that the the industry because it takes so much of your time is going to leave you lacking in another area which is stuff like your family life or spending time you know we were joking about it earlier about you know your girlfriend you know want her to like kill you because <laughs> you're sitting in your office all the time yeah, yeah yeah but like you really have to have some i mean my partner i'm lucky you know i don't know if this is just a thing that has been a thing that she's developed but she's very understanding of the fact that i need to be sat on my computer for a long time doing arduous tasks because it's just part of who I am. I mean, luckily she's a software developer, so she definitely understands she gets more it, yeah. than yeah. But like, um, but yeah, it's it's very rare to find people who are 
patient enough of that kind of stuff because then eventually like you said when you know if you get stuff involved like kids or you know you're trying to spend a bit more time together then it, it can be really hard right it, it's almost like yeah i yeah, don't want to i don't want to yeah. i don't want to sugarcoat that because mm. like me me and my wife we intentionally are not having kids uh, and that's just our right. choice but that's mm. one of the it's a big merit for me, for my career at least, right? I have a very understanding wife and she lets me work mm. seven days a week. Um, yep. And, you know, then besides my work, if I'm not doing freelance or um, art what, I'm definitely, I'm definitely spending time with my wife because I know that she doesn't get the, the attention that she basically deserves. Right. But she knows that yeah, yeah. I'm doing this for a career and maybe later it will pay off in terms of, you know, how much time I can spend on it. Yeah. Uh, but I'm definitely not trying to sugarcoat the fact and say that, you know, you can have kids as much as you want and you can spend, mm. you know, just a couple of hours a day on art. You definitely could, but if you mm. want to be at like that upper echelon of artists, there's always, and yeah. it's not, it's not only artists, right? It's like I said, if you want to be in the upper, upper echelon of anything, you just yeah. need to put in the time. Uh, yeah. There's yeah, no getting no. around I mean, the, to that. The, the CEO of any company is definitely spending less time at home than like the guy who's out, you know, doing the, the, the normal day to day job. Exactly. You know, there's, there's a, th- you know, even with my old job, I think the fact that even though I hated it, the good thing was that, I could come home at night and switch my head off. Yes. I didn't have to think about my work or what the next step was. But like, you know, Diane sees it, you know, ever so much when she's with me that, you know, if I'm not doing something in 3D or I'm working on something, I'm watching a tutorial or I'm like yeah. adding people on LinkedIn or I'm reaching out to people for advice. Or like I just took part in like a week long game jam thing recently and I've been pushing out work. I've finished like nine projects in six weeks. Like I'm just no stopping. But then I think there does time a, a come a time where you know, you're good enough that like you didn't have to be constantly learning things. Like there's a point where you can get to where you didn't you can switch off like a little. You know, you can ease back like from fifty fifth gear to fourth. It's no Yeah, yeah, yeah. A thing that you, yeah, you'll not be I mean, I think even just physically you couldn't do it for so long. I mean I say this right enough, but then I know guys in the industry who have like two young kids and a wife and uh and they manage. But then like of course their time is very structured so like you know as soon as they get home for the studio it's like right okay four hours with the kids before they go to bed and yeah. then as soon as they're in bed i'm back to work again well and that's um, the thing they have a studio to go to right so they have yeah. that disconnection with between family and work uh yeah. whereas if you're a freelancer that's that gets a lot harder to do right yeah i mean that's is that something you've thought about and like the future you maybe want to try and go like yeah. studio wide i definitely thought right yeah i definitely thought of that um and just because to have also that separation between work life and, and, and private life. And it's like you said, like when you get into like this sort of work or you're, you become self-employed and you're, you're your own boss, you know, you're financially independent, quote unquote, yeah. your mind just never stops, right? It never mm-hmm. stops. You can always improve, um, you know, like with art what now for instance, I'm, I'm investing in a new website and stuff like that. It's not things that I need to do. But it's definitely right. things that I know will help improve um, the the program overall. And it's just, it puts a lot of extra stress on yourself, but you do it yeah. because you have that passion and that drive. And it's like you said, when you have the nine to five job, you can just come home, switch off. Now, the question is, of course, which is more fulfilling, right? And the answer is pretty easy. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's still, sometimes I think people heavily underestimate what it takes Um not only mentally, but also physically onto your body uh, when you're doing this kind of work. And you definitely know this. And that's why one of the main reasons that I work out quite heavily, right? Because I still want to have that mentality of a healthy mind and a healthy body. Uh, and that yeah. definitely helps. So, Yeah, I think it's definitely one of these things that I, I definitely have seen in other artists and me especially like since the lockdown. Um, which is crazy, right? Because we'll probably get into that, but how that's probably actually probably helped your business. But, you know, I definitely know that I've put more weight on since the lockdown and I've definitely looked at myself in the mirror a couple of weeks ago and I was like, oh, man, I need to do something about this. Because even I think back in 2017, I lost a bunch of weight when I was, uh, when I was, you know, I think in my third year at uni. But yeah, but that steadily went back on because, you know, I've been so invested in just networking or meeting people or going to stuff or doing artwork and whatever else. But it's I'm getting to a point now where I'm like, 
you know, I mean, I'm 35 now. I mean, I thought this to myself the other day, like when, you know, depending on who wins this election, when they leave office, I'll nearly be 40. So I was <laughs> yeah. like, I really need to think about, you know, my body and my mind and making sure those things are connected and uh, making sure that I'm looking after myself because obviously, you know, you don't want any you know stupid health scares or things going on that are going to make you, you know, less able to do your job or less able to sit or stand or all this kind of thing. Yeah. Um, especially because our job, especially, you know, like has so many injuries just inherently built in it. Like, you know, like RSI, respect strain injury, and then you go back problems. Yeah, 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 definitely. Eye strain, everything under there. And you're sitting all day, of course, which is just That's bad. That's the worst. Things. That's the worst, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Have you got a standing desk or anything recently? Or I haven't. I have. I do have like this uh, Ergotron arm that I can put up way, you know, that I can put way up so I can stand actually at it um, or right. behind it. So that yeah. definitely helps. But admittedly, I don't do it that often. Um, yeah. Just, yeah, it's difficult, man. Yeah. It's hard to look after yourself when you're an artist because you're just, you're hunched over. It's very hard. Constantly. Yeah. I mean, yeah, like even, you know, people I know who are in the, the tattoo industry, you know, because I also love tattoos. Oh, but, that's got to be brutal. Oh, mate. I know guys who are in their like mid 20s who have like just serious back problems because yeah. they're just hunched over all day tattooing stuff. And, um, you know, and then they're drawn all day and top of yeah. that to get better because that's even that industry now is super competitive. You know, good to apart from being able to, you know, copy stuff, you've also got to be able to like draw stuff in pencil from scratch to be able to get, you know, to bring the customers Most in. Most of them are them. like really needing to become step up their game and become artists themselves, right? Not only just oh, yeah, copy artists, 100%. but also yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I've seen yeah. that grow. I, yeah. I definitely I mean years ago I had the total, you know, idiot mindset that like, oh, you know, tattoo artists copy stuff or they just colour in and whatever else. But you know, us having got tattoos, and you know, you speak to those guys for hours when you're getting stuff done in your arm. Um, Kyle, shout out Kyle, uh, who is my tattoo artist, uh, and and even Sophie, who who also does stuff for me. Like both of them are just, you know, they finish their work and go home and sit and just draw all night. And some of the stuff they draw, people are like, oh my god, I want that tattoo to me because it's so impressive. And it's the thing where, like, yeah, you've got to sacrifice a lot of your health. And yeah, I know even uh, some of them have been taking like their health seriously recently as well because you know, again, it's one of these things the better shape your body is in general like you can kind of avoid that stuff yeah very much you know, avoid it but it's less impactful on your body if you can if you can weigh that out with exercising or yoga or stretching or whatever um, yeah, that's so, the yeah, thing. yeah yeah that's for me like that's i'm very much into mindset i'm very uh attentive to it because um i'm actually pretty sensitive to addiction uh, i know that right so like and not not like um drug addiction or that could be, but um, like right. just coffee addiction or, you know, sweet addiction or whatever. Uh, I, I, right. I, I sense that I'm very sensitive to it. Um, so what I try right. to do is I try to, to a certain large degree, avoid that mm. by having good habits, you know, consistently right. working out, changing my mindset, doing yoga as mm. well with my wife, um, right walk you know getting up um at the same hour every day you know just these consistent habits that change my mindset actually remap how i think and just makes mm -hmm. me a lot more efficient um also with my art and my programming um, mm -hmm. and i think that's all connected right also you yeah. you work from home right i work from home so why not wear uh sweatpants every day i don't do that yeah. i used to do it but i feel, right. then i feel more I don't know, like lazy and unproductive. And so I act more lazy and unproductive when I'm in sweatpants. Ah, okay. So now I actually dress better when I'm at home. It sounds silly, but it's like these little no, things no. that really help you, uh, you know, be more efficient and, and just be aware of your own mindset. Yeah, I mean, I definitely know uh, my partner, like when I first met her, she was working um f like remotely for a company so she was basically working out of her bedroom right. and that was kind of like slowly driving her insane because she just had nobody about her all the time and she couldn't ask questions and stuff so when she changed careers and became a, a software developer she was like oh great i get to go back into an office and meet people again yeah and she got a job in like january uh working as a software developer and then like i think oh, well of course covid hit in february march a uh, so she was then um like she had to work from home so they get sent other stuff to work from home so she was back to working from home again but then like she's consistently since march made a point of getting up getting dressed and washed putting her work clothes on right and going into her desk you know she'll have a pair of slippers on but whatever but like she's still trying to at least get a, across the mindset that, like 
about my work now. I'm dressing in a particular way. This is the off my office gear. This is my, you know, and exactly. like you said, it's easy enough to, to slip into the, the sweatpants, but it takes the hard determination to get up and actually be like, I'm going to dress myself and look presentable. Um, so yeah, like I, I totally understand that mindset. You see, you're saying, you know, it sounds silly. I think it's actually very common yeah. for people to, to want to do that. So, I mean, props to you 100 percent for for doing that. So what's uh? So we're talking about teaching and feedback and art ward and of course you're still working in concept yeah what's the uh what, what do you think is the next step for art ward i mean things you can talk about obviously but like is there anything in particular that you think is like your next goal your aim for like teaching I ha- or I something have, that you want I to have, tackle like the plans that i have if i would tell you them you would probably think i'm crazy I'm not going to I'm not going <laughs> to I'm not going to tell the things I have in like the far far future for art one but there's definitely things okay. like if this ever becomes a very monetary success there are many things that I would like to do. Uh in the right. short term goal is definitely just um getting the new website up so that it's more accessible mm-hmm. for people. Uh right. it's a lot more efficient in terms of navigation for users, better Discord integration. Uh launching mm-hmm. the painting program is going to be one uh that right. is on the on the list. Um, okay. I've, I've sort of postponed it, um, for two reasons. One mm-hmm. is that I'm afraid that too many beginners might jump into the painting program directly and get demotivated by the amount of work that they need to do and the kind of skill mm-hmm. level that I'm already expecting them to have, because I'm a right. very, very big believer that you can, you can get 80% of the way to being a professional by just drawing. That's my yes. honest honest opinion and there will be people agree, that disagree with, with me that. but um that's my yeah. real honest opinion um i think the foundation to every job in the creative industry is drawn yes even with tdr yes and yeah. like because the only thing that separates painting from drawing basically is your in painting you're drawing with shapes and color notes that's right. that's how i see it the rest is all yeah, the yeah. same design perspective composition value mm-hmm. especially you can all do that with yeah. drawing uh, so that's yes. why I've kind of put it off to some degree, but of course I need to need to launch it at some point. Um, so I will launch it. But the other kind of logistic, um, well, uh, kind of fear that I have is that it will take mm-hmm. an exponential amount of time, extra amount of time, uh, for me to invest right. in because now it, it, the the work doesn't double; it actually triples uh, if you look at it logistically. Yeah. So I need to you know, stop a lot of freelance work, uh, do more mm. tutorials, do more classrooms. Um, yeah. And it's definitely with like a, a huge amount of love that I want to do it, but I do want to make it as, as good as I can from the get go, which is right. going to be impossible, but I'm definitely going to strive to do it. Um, other than that, I would love to see in the, in the, in the somewhat further future of art want see like a buddy program, uh, where we have more um, more engagement between the students, even more than we have now in the in the Discord, uh, where right. I can sort of appoint people that have been very consistent with the program, have mm-hmm. somewhat of a very good skill level, and then they can mm-hmm. um, give like one-on-one sessions to other students that want to sign up to that Art Buddy program. Yeah, so it's like, again, like, you know, once you reach a certain level, then you start to also teach back to other people yeah. underneath you because you only really, I mean, essentially, you don't always have to go to a master, right? Sometimes you just need somebody that's, like, just a little bit ahead of you yes. to be able to, like, feedback. So, yeah, I think that's a good idea because then you're obviously splitting the workload. And, I mean, I think, essentially, if you're going to take this to a point where, like, it was it was almost full-time teaching, yeah, you'd probably look into, like, possibly hiring somebody as, like, you know, a production manager or a second in command yeah, or something like so. yeah. handle other yeah because then i mean there's only so much you can do yourself i mean you can't do everything like well that's that a, that's the thing that uh, that's something that i've you know learned from business as well is that there are a number of things that you do when you run a business uh, and m- when you start your business it's almost all creative Right, because the creative right, part yeah. of your business doesn't have to be art per se can be anything can be products and stuff like that but it's the creative mm-hmm product that sells right that gets people going but at some point you need to branch out you need to you know become marketable and stuff like that but Mm -hmm. at that time you need management to do that but if you become a manager yourself your creative part takes a hit so i definitely want to avoid that uh yes i want to focus on the creative part of teaching 
Yes, 100%. I definitely found that when I had my own business even years back and I was doing even just like, you know, business design for people like, you know, just simple design stuff. But um, the more I took on the business side of it and the more I tried to grow, the more I was going to meetings and bringing in clients exactly. and actually sitting physically drawing or doing anything design wise. So, yeah, it's, you've definitely got to um, surround yourself with like, you know, like many people and people you feel you can delegate tasks to and, and get things done. But yeah. it's it's a big undertaking. But then uh, one last thing I want to talk about just before you go as well is... Um, you run uh, the boot camp over the summer as well, like yeah. during the, the July months. Um, looking back at that now, how do you feel it went? And do you think you would want to tackle another one at one point? Uh, yeah, very much so. I, I think um, with the way that art is set up right now, I wouldn't stop the other programming. I would definitely continue that. But that was just because right. of a logistic uh, impossibility, actually, that I couldn't continue the, the program. Uh, to right. focus on the boot camp but yeah i will definitely do that because i've saw a lot of growth within that one month with uh other yeah. students uh, and it's just mm-hmm. that also to just give them a taste of what it can really be like to design for a client right the struggles right. that it comes with and definitely the deadlines that you need to meet uh, i think that was a great exercise for for the students and i saw a lot of potential in it. and and um, i was very pleasantly surprised with the uh with the submissions so uh mm. yeah we'll definitely be doing that again yeah i mean like even me doing that game jam a couple of weeks ago like you know we only had four or five days but like that yeah, short looks deadline amazing. and yeah and mixing with people and, and getting to you know work with other people other programmers on stuff and bring your art to life and, and you know work to a, a brief like i think a short stint a lot of the things can definitely exponentially make people really quickly grow as artists because yeah. it, it it hones in a lot of skills you have to really use quickly and without prompt and you know you're not having to rely on the safety of like oh, i can get this done tomorrow or whenever it doesn't really matter like it's due on a date so yeah. um yeah i definitely think those short stints are, are really good for for students so and it's yeah, also definitely. just a very very good reality check of of where you're standing in terms of your development uh because sometimes yes. you know this the assignments are already uh, like a reality check for a lot of students but when you do yeah. like these boot camps and mm-hmm. you ha- you're in like an artificial work environment so to speak mm-hmm. uh, that really puts like an extra level of intensity to what you need to do um, and yeah. that's a really good tester for you for like your skills and see where you're at and see how your development goes and how you actually problem solve because that's like probably 80 percent of our job description is actually problem solving right um right so that's a yeah that's a good exercise for that i can imagine okay well that sounds like a good time to wrap that up um yeah again thanks for coming on and 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 being thanks, a guest man. it's and, been and fun about yeah, yeah totally like it's it's always great to just get people on and shoot the shit and just talk about art in general uh and then this day i, I mean I think it's always these things where you feel like you're maybe going over the same territory a lot of the time, but uh, I think for a lot of people, um, especially with a lot of these podcasts, people will be bumping into you for the first time, and I think it's always good to even just let people hear the same basic stuff about you know how to approach the industry and how to work. And um, yeah, it's and also yeah, just cool think- to see like from the from the podcast that I listened from you is it's, it's cool to see where we hit like where professionals like me and other professionals that I admire to and look up to because you have a a nice portfolio of people that you've interviewed um, <laughs> to see where we touch on like the same notes, but also to see what different approaches they have to like studying or, you know, being a professional. Uh, that's yeah. always really interesting to see. So um, yeah, definitely keep doing it then. Yeah, man, hundred percent. Well, as you know, there is, there is, there's guests of plenty coming up uh, and I'm, I'm sure we're going to have uh, a lot of interesting conversations, yeah. but uh, yeah. yeah, definitely. Thanks for coming on. Um, yeah so i mean thanks to you guys as well if you've listened to this point and uh, you're still about um thanks for checking out the episode um i'll make sure to link all of antonio's uh links below you know all his social media stuff his art station and of course artwad and um, if you guys want to sign up you jump onto his website um you guys can jump into the, the drawing program get access to the discord um there's a huge community there that are very receptive very welcoming um, and of course, like I say, is, and of course, if you've been listening, you know that Antonio puts on a lot of passion and a lot of time into what he does at Artwad. And um, I think it will be 
some of the best money you'll probably ever spend especially i think for the money that you are spending it i think it's an absolute steal um compared to a lot of other programs that will charge you um a lot more money to basically get the same thing um i think it, it's probably one of the best valued um aspects of, of drawing and, and learning online especially so yeah uh, i'll make sure i leave all his links and of course um if you want to get in touch i'm sure you can just reach out and he'll answer any questions you have and uh and yeah that's basically it um thanks again to antonio thanks to you guys for listening um check out all of our other social links um we primarily are on youtube but of course this podcast goes out around the world in different aspects of spotify google Podcasts, uh stitcher a lot of other things so if you want to listen you can listen in multiple places or of course come over to youtube leave us a like a comment and a bit of feedback and of course we'll uh we'll catch you guys in the next episode thanks guys bye